feet one time, amen, God of glory. Come on, let's give a round of praise. Let's one time. Come on, clap your hands. If you have to respond, give him glory. Because he's got, he's got it in his hands. We have more than what the disciples had. 
They have letters. We have a Bible. Uh -huh. We have over 66 books. Yes, but if you ask anybody today, go to any street corner and ask them, give me one verse that you might know. Maybe 9 out of 10, you might. I don't know. Maybe more, maybe less. But the majority of them couldn't tell you anything about the Lord. This generation, our generation, my generation, who were tired of being and going to church and going back and forth because they didn't want to be pressured. Well, look what the now look what the look what you done. My generation. Look what we done. We didn't pressure our children to go to church. Now look. Yes, sir. Wow. Now look. Now we have the pride. Now we have the problems. And the world don't offer nothing but heartache and destruction. The enemy, the Satan, said he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't changing. But we bless God for this day. We're going to honor this day, Lord, as a day of renewing yeah. from the inside to the outside. Yeah. For what's in us will surely come out of us. Right. If it be good or be bad, yeah. but we'd rather have good come out than bad. But if we have anything or any alt, this is the place. If we have any feelings of ill will, then this is the place. If we have any animosity or any hardness of heart and pride that allows us to not see Jesus today, this is the place to come. That's right. This is where you settle old gripes and problems. This is where you get it all hashed out. Right. This is where you get to the place where you are comfortable at and doing the things that are right. Because right. if you can't do it here, what else can you do? Amen. I thank God for the church. Amen. I thank God for his blessing Amen. us in this church. Thank God for our pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all our pastors. Pastor Wenge, Minister Shirley Frederick, God bless you. Amen. For miracle. Amen. House of worship. Amen. Amen. Down in Fayetteville. We thank God today. We thank God for those who we know even as an acquaintance. If I haven't met you, if it's my first time or maybe I forgot your face, I just say thank you today for coming and fellowshipping with us because you could have been somewhere else. I'm going not to wear your attention or your amen, attention stand, but real quick, you have your Bibles? Hey, you got your Bibles? I want you to turn, please, if you will, Go with me, amen, real quickly, 1 Corinthians, amen, and 15th, amen, and the 20 through the 22nd verse, come on, and we give God the praise, and after that we'll go into John 11, which is our meat and potatoes of the message today, I, hear, I want y'all to hear me today, amen, it centers around Jesus and the resurrection. But it gives emphasis to one he raised from the dead named Lazarus. But in this we understand the resurrection is not just a action word, it's a noun. Because the Lord says, I am the resurrection. When he says I'm the resurrection, that means he's not only an action word or a man as in I resurrect you, but I am the resurrection. That means he is that he is. The existential, they call it. Amen. Oh, I wish I could get some help. Amen. Amen. Y'all oh, got like tired. Y'all been up cooking all night. So, amen. Bless the Lord. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 20, and verse that it reads as such. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, and even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm, mm, mm. That's good, ain't it? Amen. Amen. Lord and Father, we come on this once again to say thank you, Lord, thank you. for your word. Bless you, God, for each and every one who hear the word and become doers of the word. And as I decrease, if you increase, Lord, Lord, not of me, but all of you. We crucify flesh right now in Jesus' name. 
Color me under the blood. Keep us covered. Knowing that we are all partakers. And the first partakers is the messenger. The one that hears and the one that preaches. Amen. And amen. You may have to see in the presence of the Lord. If I could use the title today, this is it. The Resurrection. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? This is going to trouble you. This might trouble you a little. But if you've seen the resurrection, then you've seen Jesus. If you've seen the resurrection, you've seen it in yourself. The resurrection is in you and I. The resurrection, as some would say, is why we are here and alive today. Because without it, we would not be here. The resurrection. The resurrection, have you seen it today? Have you seen it at all? Have you seen it previously? Are you seeing it even presently, church? That Jesus said, as he yet by one man, yet died. And yet, even by one, which is Christ, that we are now made alive in him. If we keep and follow him, and understand that. So even now, as it is with us in learning and knowing the Lord, I want this day, as we focus on Jesus, the story of John, the 11th chapter, and this is the story that is often at this time used quite a bit. But I saw and read something really amazing in reading, and not just the 11th chapter, but the 12th chapter as well. But I can't go into detail, but I'm going to kind of paraphrase, and I'm just going to give the synopsis of the sort, just so it will make it easy and make it understandable, because some of you may not have read this story, but it's a grand story on a grand scale when you read about Lazarus. You see what is going on. It plays like a movie. Because first and foremost, Lazarus was loved by Jesus. Can I get a witness? Amen. He had disciples around him. He had all the other folks. And yet he said he loved Lazarus. Now in that amen trial, if you will, there was also Mary and Martha. And y'all remember Mary Y'all remember Martha, right? Amen. Come on now. Amen. One of those that put it and took a sprinkling, a sprinkling, how you say it, the ointment oil, and put it on her Jesus' feet and began to wipe it with her hand. But it's crazy because these two were connected to Lazarus. They were the siblings of Lazarus. Amen. Amen. See, a lot of times we focus on that what Jesus did, but there's a story before we get to Lazarus come forward. The things that we deal with even on today and on different levels of our growth in Christ as well as our struggles to become resurrected in Him. Now, you may not feel resurrected right now. Come on, church. Can I talk? You may not feel resurrected because sometimes, as you plainly can see, not all of us feel like every day we feel resurrected to go out and take the world. We don't feel like that way when we got obstacles that keep coming. Amen. It don't seem like the seven stop and you begin to wonder and say, Lord, am I this bad? Because it seems like every test I go through, there comes another test. Amen. And yet somehow you feel within yourself that I'm going to just die. I can't take it. I'm going to die if this don't stop. But God has yet to prove himself to you and yet, he has an appointed time to resurrect you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Y'all gonna make a hard for me today, ain't you? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. But I'm here to let you know, in the book of John 11, it says in first verse, And now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister 
Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord, come on, went on and wiped his feet with her hair. Y'all heard me say that, right? Yeah. And whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now there was a thing, as y'all know, they didn't have cars and telephones, so the, the, the conversation to send out a message might have taken a couple of hours. Jesus just happened to be somewhere far off, and he was sent the word. And from the distance that he had to travel to Bethany was accordingly uh, about 15 furlongs. Translation, about two miles. Can you see yourself walking two miles to see if somebody is either dead or alive? Are y'all hearing that? But Jesus went on, amen, and he stayed a little longer. He stayed so long that it had been four days, church, before Lazarus even came out of the grave. But this is where it gets good, and this is why I want to talk about it. Because down in verse 9, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. You know, like I said, we are in this time of the year for equal parts. The sun for half and darkness for the other. I love this time of year, but other folks do different things in different ways in terms of what we call the equinox, vernal or autumn as well as winter and summer solstice. And I know that's a lot, 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 amen, of just knowledge. But one thing we are, amen, if we would just tune ourselves, we can find out some things. Because all this plays out within the Word of God. Now, let me keep reading. It says now, verse 10, it says, But if a man walk in night, he stumbleth, of course, but he, what? He stumbled because there is no light in him. Right? So I say it again, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbled because there is no light in him. So resurrection represents light. Amen. 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 Resurrection means that if I walk, I don't walk in fear. Resurrection means if I'm out here and they say that, you know, they said if you go back over there, amen, to the city, they got it in for you. Amen. But the Lord said, he is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah, he made me lie down in green pasture. Amen. He leave me inside the still woods. He restored my soul. He leave me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes. Ain't though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yes. Yes. yet I fear no evil. For he says, Thou art with me. So when I walk in light, I walk in the resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen here. 12 verse says, The disciples and the Lord, they said that Lazarus was asleep. So shall he do well. Somebody said, Well, I would go to sleep with him. But they're not understanding what Jesus was talking about. Knowing that Jesus had not yet told them that not only did he know already what was of Lazarus' fate, he was trying to give them, amen, some serious knowledge in hopes that they might catch on. Because in verse 14 it says, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Come on. Lazarus is dead. 15, and I am glad for your sake, says Jesus was saying, that I was not there. Come on. Right. Sometimes, you know, we got to be out of the place in order for God to do some things. Yes. Right? Is that right? right? Sometimes our very presence sometimes can withhold some things that God wants to do. You're right. Sometimes we got we delay. We don't even understand why. Sometimes we be in a hurry to do things, but then something comes along, and then you start getting upset. But wait a minute. What if something was to go down if you travel down that road right. at that specific time? Right. What if, had you not left when you yeah. did, could it have been that you would be involved in a different situation? Right. 
We don't know what God knows. Right. I'm thankful to know that God knows it better. But how many know that even if you think about this, you can't even put your mind around it. But if God knows you by name, yeah. 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 and he knows that you are his, yeah. Yeah. that every day you wake up knowing that God's got your best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That knowing that every day that he looks over you in spite of shortcomings. That he loves you just that much. Right. Not that God is not a million saints of God. Don't you think he cares just as much about them in any other place and any other house of worship? But the fact that he can look at you individually and know what he desires and predestines for your life. Amen. You can't even wrap your mind around that. I can't. I even marvel sometimes that a God, a just God, would even let me still live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you know what you know, that you know what you've done. Or what you did and what you think you didn't do, but you did it anyway. Amen. My God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah somebody. Yeah, Just to know that he cares for us. And the Amen. fact that he cares, even in circumstances which are beyond our control, sometimes the things that happen to us have none of us in line with what we can change. But my God said he takes the things, hallelujah, that are low. Yes. And he is yet exhausted. Yes. I know what you went through in your past. I know it hurt. I know the things you struggle with. Some of us been through metastation. Some of us have been living in homes. Amen. Abusive homes. Some of us have had the verbal abuse. Some of us have had physical abuse. Some of us, amen, have had winos and maybe thing in between. But I'm here to let you know that the folks in the church, amen, are still a work in progress. The perfection is not done so much overnight. And sometimes we fall down, but we yet get back up. And as long as God says that we stay in a repentant state of mind, that we can know that God is still in control. And if we know God like we know God that we say we know, we know that if we are not forgiving, we shall not be forgiven. If I ask you publicly or if I ask you privately, have you seen? Mm. Have you seen? Let's go forward and let's go on. And I'm closing and I'm going to bring it in. But I promise you, I can get through this. I can be patient. Amen. Thomas, y'all know, Didymus, which was me, and they made the Hebrew that he had a twin. Some have speculated the twin was Jesus, but we don't know for sure. Amen. But Didymus, as Thomas' name was, was also Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas was the one that said, if I can't stick my hand up inside of your guts, then I won't believe. Boy, that was weird even then, then that time. But even today, I wouldn't want to have to stick my hand in you just to find out you're real. But blessed are those that believe and have not seen and yet still believe. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hallelujah. So at this point, Thomas did us until his fellow disciples said, let us go that we may die with him. Amen. Did y'all hear that? Amen. So he wasn't understanding what the Lord was saying because the Lord was saying something totally different, but his interpretation of what God was saying was off. Somehow we are in the church sometimes and we can hear one thing and it's a totally different thing. But that's the art of the language that we oftentimes have. Somebody can walk out with something different from what we heard. Somebody can say, I'm going to get my blessing. Somebody else said, well, he was talking about me. But in all respects, Jesus said in seven times, he said he came and found that he had lain in the grave for four days. God Almighty. Here it come. Many of the Jews were at Martha and Maga, or rather Mary and Martha, to comfort concerning them. And it came to pass, going down further, Jesus said in verse 23, 
after Martha, she came out, y'all, come on, walk with me. She came out to Jesus. She couldn't wait for him to get down to Bethany and to the house where they lived. She went out to him. And she said, Jesus, my brother would have lived if you had been here. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Well. But yet at the same time, he says, if God had been here, my brother had would not have even died. So she was confident in him to know that much at least, right? Yeah. To know that he wouldn't even have died had Jesus. That, that's more than many of the saints of the church. That know that even the power of God exists in this house. Even if we've not seen the Lord. But if we could get that kind of movement today. To pray and intercede and do the things. You wouldn't see all these crises going on. You wouldn't see all these issues going on. Because we can put these things in subjection. But that's what Mary, as Martha was speaking, and she had enough belief to say, Jesus, if you'd been here, he would not have died. Come on here, God. Yeah. 23 says, I know, but I know that even now, that's quarterly Martha, that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give. Or rather, he will give it to you, Jesus. Thy brother shall rise again. Yes. The interesting part was, Martha said it to him, I know that he shall rise again. Jesus was telling her he will rise again. But she didn't understand his language, did she? She didn't understand that Jesus wasn't talking about the thereafter. He was talking about the then and now. But as it is with all things, sometimes we know that as Martha's understanding was darkened, but God, as in the way he is and how he majestically moved with authority and power, in verse 24, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again at the resurrection of the last day. And here it comes, church. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And he that believes in me, I reward you openly. Yeah. And I know somebody got checks 
amen, that haven't even been deposited yet. Some of us got, amen, checks right now. They right now, amen, get transitioned, amen, to the payouts. Oh, come on here. Somebody get ready to get a payout. You been waiting and waiting, but it's your time, sister. Yeah, you been waiting and waiting. You took the abuse. You took the frustration. You took the humiliation. You took being last. You took being down and out. You took that you had to end.
see the glory of God. God is pouring out the glory on that day. Verse 41, then he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. See, there were more than one in there, y'all realize that. Amen. It wasn't just Lazarus in there. So God was making the distinction, amen. Because then he told everybody to come forth. Everybody would have came out the tomb, y'all. Hallelujah. But in the fact that he did that, he said, take away the stone from that place. Amen. Where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, y'all know this would be with me. Lift up. He said, Father, I thank you. Some of y'all need to try sometimes. When you begin to have obstacles, look up and say, Father, I thank you. Have a world war. And when you got an issue down here, the Father up there, you come down here and fight your battles. Well, he said, I know that God hears me always. But because of the people who stand by, and I said that the people may believe that thou hast sent me. The whole game, yeah. and I'll explain to you and I'll paraphrase. Verse 43 And when thus they have spoken, he cried with a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And it came, and let the dead came forth, bound in hand. Some of y'all don't realize that we who are dead in trespass and sin are in the same boat with Lazarus. See ourselves from seeing ourselves. We so cute. Hallelujah. We so in the world. We so involved with every circumstance and situation. But we can't see that we are dead like Lazarus. But until we find the Lord Jesus and get Jesus in our mind, and if God don't prick our heart, there will be nobody draw to Him. I wish somebody could help me tonight. Don't you know that somebody pray for me? Uh, 
Jesus heard all those that were around him. Somebody going to betray him. I want you to know there are some in your lives that are going to betray your trust. There are some in your life that are going to do some kind of way. They're going to be little boyfriends and little girlfriends.
and it makes it difficult. But I'm, I'm so glad I'm not there yet. I ain't got there yet. I'm so glad that I can still carry a conversation with the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that I can talk like I talk to my wife. Probably better than I would to my wife. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. Because we can get mad with God all we want to get. Amen. But it ain't going to change God's opinion. Mm -hmm. But we get with each other. We love God, you gotta love each other. You can't say you love God and hate your brother or sister or mother or father or sister or brother. I got some people right now I want to lift up before God. I know some people right now that have been dealing with mental illness for over the majority of their life. And I want to pray today that God somewhere, somehow, can move. It might not be my mission. But somebody right now needs to know that God is still a deliverer of those who are schizophrenic, who are bipolar, who have mental health issues, depression or whatever, CO, what they call it, uh, COD. But I want you to know today, he's there for us, he's there for you. So Father, in Jesus' name, those who hear today, hear the word of God. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be accepted, Lord, in our sight. Forgive us, O oh God, for we have sinned and come short of your glory. If we die or we perish today, right now, we made a conscious decision to make you our Lord. For Lord, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, Deliver me from my sin. It's just like that. And find you a home, a church to grow and be a part of. Let God use you, but let, don't let men burn you out. You hear what I said? Let God use you, but don't let men burn you out. So in this prayer today, we give God glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise.